Dr. Meyer, thank you for the uh, tour de force earlier uh, as we looked at uh, uh, just the scientific inquiry and making a biblical case uh, for that and a framework for that. Uh, in our first question, uh, it's going to come straight to you. Um, in 1987, the Supreme Court overruled the case for teaching creationism alongside with evolution and was passed as unconstitutional. Does teaching a variety of scientific theories hinder students? Maybe you can comment on just where we've been from a legal framework and moving forward. Right. Uh, there have been a number of different court cases and things. Uh, without getting into the details of all the different legal uh, strategies and um, proposals that have been made, from a pedagogical standpoint, from the standpoint of teaching science, I think it's extremely constructive to teach the arguments and the controversies that have been part of science and, are, and, and which continue to be part of science. Uh, science as an enterprise advances as scientists argue about how to interpret the evidence. And what we often do in teaching uh, biology or physics or any of the sciences is we'll teach students the outcome of controversies or we'll teach them the consensus view about a controversial topic and we won't teach them how we got to that point of view or why there might still be controversy and we paper those things over. Last night I was in Washington DC and I spoke uh, at uh, a Socrates in the City event. that had a lot of uh, DC media people and, and policy wonks and politicians. And I started the talk by, talk, by uh, reciting a, a series of quotations that were conveying the consensus view that there is no controversy over Darwinian evolution. I ended the talk having explained why I am skeptical about Darwinian evolution with a series of quotes from mainstream evolutionary biologists who are now calling for a new theory of evolution because Darwin's mechanism of natural selection and random mutation has very limited creative power and we have no explanation for the origin of new biological form. So you have this huge disparity between the consensus view which is propagated by not only New York Times reporters, people like Richard Dawkins, spokesman for the New Atheism, but also all the spokesmen and women for the major science teaching organizations. The consensus view is that there is no controversy. Darwinism is settled science. That was two days ago in the Boston Globe, a major uh, article because one of the presidential candidates had said that he was skeptical about Darwinism and then they had the whole establishment land on him. Um, so I, I think one of the things that's very constructive is, we, we call it teaching the controversy. You don't have to teach uh, uh, a particular point of view. When you, you teach something, you don't have to tell students what to think, but you need to tell them the, the competing views and allow them to, um, to weigh the arguments as they are made by their chief proponents. That's just good science education. You need to know what people think and why. So um, that's, that's the approach that we favor. Now, the, the, the question is how broadly applicable can that be given the current constitutional climate? The, um, what's known as young earth creationism has been definitively ruled unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. Um, the status of intelligent design is still uncertain. It was, ruled it was ruled to be unscientific by a federal court judge in Pennsylvania, but uh, the, his jurisdiction was limited, and so the status, the constitutional status of intelligent design is, has not been settled. But at the very least, and this is what we advocate for now, students should be allowed to know both the strengths and the weaknesses of Darwinian theory, and they should know the scientific criticisms of the theory as they are appearing in the peer-reviewed mainstream scientific literature. Anything less is just n not good scientific literacy. Students need to know that there are scientists who criticize the theory, and they need to know why. That's part of learning about the theory. So that's our approach. For I am well aware that scarcely a single point is discussed in this volume on which facts cannot be adduced, often apparently leading to conclusions directly opposite to those at which I have arrived. 
A fair result can be obtained only by fully stating and balancing the facts and arguments on both sides of each question. And this cannot possibly be here done.